this is Andy Jasky with the Cap Inc. Kayak Project. Where we last left off, I had created the original overall shape of the kayak using sketch pictures. I then created a framework of stringers and cross sections that you can see here. The stringers will be made of wood and the frame will be 3D printed. At this point I had the basic kayak shape defined. However, I still needed to refine the design to ensure that it would meet my performance requirements. My performance requirements can best be described as three basic questions. Will it float? Will it be stable? And will it be fast? The first question, will it float, is easy to answer using SOLIDWORKS. I started by creating a new configuration of my model that contained a solid body of the kayak. Then I created a reference plane that represented the waterline at 4 inches of draft, and used this plane to cut away the part of the boat that was not in the water. The result was the volume of water that would be displaced by the kayak. Because buoyancy is equal to the weight of the water displaced, I applied the density of water to the underwater volume, and used the mass properties tool to find the weight. I then refined the underwater area to get my desired displacement for the design. I also had SOLIDWORKS calculate the center of mass for this underwater section. This allowed me to adjust where I wanted to place the cockpit. I continued to check back to my center of mass and my displacement as I further modified my model for stability and drag. The next level of refinement was for stability. With most large boats, the total mass of the boat is relatively static. However, with a kayak, the paddler will shift their weight to correct for tipping. For this reason, I was less interested in finding and designing for a maximum tipping point, but instead wanted to design for the best stability curve. So as the boat starts to tip and roll, the kayaker can feel the change in riding moment and correct by changing position and bracing. There is not a stability curve tool inside of SOLIDWORKS. However, I was able to use a design study to create my stability curve. The design study is something of a generic tool that allows for modifying portions of a design and then pulling information from the design and mapping that information as a chart or table of data. To help explain the sort of stability I wanted, I have created a simple rectangular prism sitting in water. The prism's center of mass is directly in line with the center of buoyancy. This means that the two forces are in equilibrium, and there is no writing force on the prism from the water. This would be like sitting in a wide skiff in a flat pond. Now, if we start to tip the prism, the center of buoyancy shifts away from the center of mass. The result is a force from the water on the prism that is trying to push the center of buoyancy back in line with the center of mass. The distance between the two forces act like a lever arm, so the further the center of buoyancy is from the center of mass, the larger the riding moment. Because the magnitude of force is not changing, simply measuring the distance between the two forces as the body rotates in the water provides us with the data we need to create a stability curve. Ideally, we would want a smooth curve. This would indicate a boat that steadily pushes back as the boat leans over, giving good feedback to the paddler. In contrast, taking a look at the curve generated by this rectangular prism reveals a very bumpy curve. You can see where the prism transitions from one 90 degree flat to another, as there is a steady rise in resistance followed by a quick drop. If this were a kayak, it would be described as having very strong initial stability, but no secondary stability. This would only be acceptable if the boat was intended for very flat bodies of water where the paddler would not need to brace because if the boat starts to tip, it would resist very strongly and then suddenly just flip over. Because I wanted a boat for the ocean, I needed a smooth curve that would very steadily gain and lose riding moment. To create the stability curve for my boat, I reused the underwater section that I created when determining the displacement but then I modified its definition so it could be rotated at an angle to simulate the boat being leaned over. I used the design study to see how the distance from the center of mass to the center of buoyancy changed as the boat was rotated in the water. While I could track and modify many dimensions, all I needed for this study was the angle of heel, the angle of the waterline plane, and the distance of the two forces. 
In the variable section, I chose to modify the water angle from 1 degree to 80 degrees, recording at 2.5 degree increments. For the output, I created a constraint to monitor the dimension between the two forces. You can see SolidWorks modify the model as it runs through the design study. The result, after bringing the raw data into Excel, is my stability curve. As you can see here, after a few iterations, I have a relatively smooth curve. Also, the tipping point is around 50 degrees, though this is relative because the paddler shifting weight would allow the kayak to roll further before flipping over. The final analysis for the refinement of the shape of the kayak was drag. Traditionally, a boat shape was largely based on the whim of the designer. Over time, the attributes of the better designs were copied on new designs. Though inefficient, over time this method led to an understanding that longer, thinner hole shapes were better than short, wide designs. In more modern times, the Frode number allows scale models to help discover the most efficient designs. Also, analytical models based on measurements that mathematically describe the shape of the hole are used to determine and predict the hole performance. In the 1980s, John Winters developed the Kaper equations to find and predict hole drag on kayaks and canoes. I decided to use this method as a first pass when determining the hole drag. However, there is some subjectivity to the Kaper equation. To get a more precise prediction, I needed a computational fluid dynamic simulation, also known as a CFD. I decided to use SolidWorks Flow to both validate my Kaper prediction and also to see how slight variations in hole shape would affect the drag. I created a study that was time dependent and stepped up the speed with time. This allowed me to track the drag on the hole at these speeds and then output and plot them. I set up my computational domain to take into account the wetted area of the boat. I meshed the study and let it run. After bringing the study data into Excel and overlaying with my CAPER numbers, both methodologies agreed. The deviation at about 3.5 knots can be explained by the additional wave making at higher speeds. Currently SolidWorks Flow is not able to simulate the free surface between the air and water to fully take the bow wake drag into account. But because I am most interested in the drag at speeds under 4 knots, SolidWorks Flow can provide me with the data I need. Also, by using SolidWorks to validate the caper numbers, I am more confident my calculations are correct at the higher speed predictions. Once I had my displacement, stability, and drag studies set up, I quickly could see how a modification to the hole changed the performance of my design. With hole shape completed, I was ready to move to the internal structure. In the next video, I will show how I used a new optimization software called Inspire to reduce the amount of material needed to make the kayak, and how I validated the structural design using SolidWorks simulation.